Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Captain John C. Inch, United States Navy, Commander Naval Training Center, and Captain Mary Ann Hayes, United States Navy, Commanding Officer Recruit Training Command, take great pleasure in extending to you a hearty welcome aboard. We are proud to present these young men who make up our modern Navy. Captain Hayes is pleased to present the division officer and staff who led the recruit companies of today's graduating division. The division officer for Division 8 is Lieutenant Junior Grade Melissa Barnes. She is responsible for the coordination, scheduling, and well-being of the 251 recruits within the division. The chaplain for Division 8 is Lieutenant Steve Orth. Chaplain Orth is responsible for the spiritual well-being of each recruit within the division. The division staff includes Senior Chief Machinist Mate Surface Warfare Stanley Edwards and Machinist Mate First Class Surface Warfare Eduardo Paris. The company commanders for Division 8 are those outstanding and dedicated men who have personally supervised the training of each recruit within the respective company. Their continuing example of strong leadership professionalism and high standards of personal conduct represent the foundation upon which recruit training is built. As a result of their efforts, today's graduates are better equipped to assume responsible positions in the world's finest Navy. As these men are introduced, their company flag will be raised in the field to show their company's location. The company commanders for company 109R, Chief Machinist Mate Rogelio Danao, and Senior Chief Machinist Mate Cesar Falarca. The company commanders for Company 110 are Senior Chief Machinist Mate, Submarine Service, Peter Yuhos, and Chief Boatswain's Mate, Surface Warfare, Randolph Arthur. The company commanders for Company 111 are Gunners Mate Guns, First Class, Theodore Fry, and Aviation Boatswain's Mate Fuels First Class Air Warfare, Ronald Tay. The company commanders for Company 112 are Mess Management Specialist First Class Submarine Service, Dan Kalavig, and Electronics Warfare Technician First Class Surface Warfare, Walter Tony. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the commanding officer, we congratulate the company commanders and division staff who successfully led these recruits through training.
Today's reviewing party consists of, from left to right, Captain Mary Ann Hayes, United States Navy, Commanding Officer Recruit Training Command, the guest of honor, Mr. Richard Emerson, Chief of Police, Chula Vista Police Department, Captain John C. Inch, United States Navy, Commander, Naval Training Center, and the reviewing officer, Rear Admiral Lloyd Allen, Jr., United States Navy, Commander, Carrier Group 4. Today's reviewing officer is Rear Admiral L. E. Allen, Jr., United States Navy, Commander, Carrier Group 4, and Commander, Carrier Striking Force. A 1965 graduate of the University of Texas, Admiral Allen was commissioned through the Naval Aviation Officer Candidate Program and was designated a Naval Flight Officer in 1966. He has a master's degree in international relations, is a graduate of the National War College, and was given the 1990 Navy League John Paul Jones Award for his inspirational leadership. A career naval aviator and qualified surface warfare officer, Admiral Allen has served in fighter squadrons 41 and 1 as assistant professor of naval science at the University of Texas with the F-14 Fleet Introduction Team at Naval Air Station Miramar as administrative assistant and aide to the assistant chief of naval operations, air warfare, and on the staffs of Commander Carrier Air Wing 11 and the Chief of Naval Operations. Admiral Allen also has commanded Fighter Squadron 1, Carrier Air Wing 2, the amph amphibious assault ship USS Vancouver, and the aircraft carrier USS Coral Sea. Selected flag rank in 1990, he was assigned as Commander Naval Space Command, then as Deputy Director for Operations on the Joint Staff in Washington, D.C. During his aviation career, Admiral Allen has accumulated more than 3,300 flight hours and more than 1,200 arrested carrier landings in 19 different aircraft types. His military decorations include the Defense Superior Service Medal, two awards of the Legion of Merit, two awards of the Meritorious Service Medal, the Navy Commendation Medal, and the Navy Achievement Medal. Today's guest of honor is Richard P. Emerson, Chief of Police for the City of Chula Vista. Relatively new to the San Diego area, 
Chief Emerson took the reins of the Chula Vista Police Department 18 months ago after 23 years with the Pasadena Police Department in Los Angeles County, where he rose to the rank of captain. The Chula Vista Police Department is comprised of 162 sworn police officers and 80 non-sworn employees. This organization is charged with providing safety and a sense of security to the city's 141,000 residents spread out over the 35 square miles which encompass the second largest city in San Diego County. Six weeks after taking command in Chula Vista, Chief Emerson received his baptism under fire with a tense hostage situation involving a murder suspect holding 10 people against their will. Under the chief's direction, the situation culminated after a 26 hour standoff. All hostages were released unharmed and the suspect was taken into custody where he remains today. Chief Emerson holds a master's degree in management sciences from the California State University at Pomona. While working in Pasadena, he commanded many special events at the Rose Bowl, including two Super Bowls and the 1984 Olympic soccer venues, as well as the annual Rose Parade and football game. Involved in many community and professional organizations, Chief Emerson is currently the chairman of the Regional Auto Theft Task Force, secretary treasurer of the San Diego Chiefs and Sheriffs Association, president of the Southwood Hospital Advisory Board, and a member of the South Bay YMCA Advisory Board. Will the assembly please rise for the invocation and remain standing for the national anthem. Chapin North will now offer the invocation. Let us pray. O God of the heavens, grant us light and sun as our days become longer and world hope brighter. Let your brilliance shine on Division 8. Today our world glistens with hope as these young sailors prepare to enter the greatest Navy on Earth. Be it for our concern in Somalia or our determination in Iraq, give them continued excellence, dauntless courage, invincible teamwork, and incredible attention to detail. We thank you for their administrative staff and company commanders who guided them, for their families and friends whose love supported them, and for the United States of America, our magnificent nation, which calls them forth, forth in service. Amen. Aye, aye. Aye, aye. Aye. Do the thousand on. Aye, sir. Whoa.
color guard marching to the far end of the field is composed of six recruits parading our flags in the order of their seniority. Furthest away is the American flag. Next is the United States Navy flag complete with battle streamers. These 27 streamers with 24 silver stars and 33 bronze stars commemorate the wars and combat actions of our Navy during its proud 217 year history. Next is the Recruit Training Command flag, and closest to you is the Prisoner of War Missing in Action flag, carried in remembrance of the over 2,200 Americans still unaccounted for in Indochina. San Diego, which has just tripped the division, was the only non-recruit unit on the field. It is our pleasure to welcome the parents and guests of today's graduating recruits. An exhibition consisting of three evolutions, featuring the crack rifle drill team, the drum and bugle corps, and the 50 state flag team will be performed. Thank you. 
The rifles being carried are the original 1903 30 caliber Springfields. This type of rifle was used in World War I. Each weighs just under 10 pounds and its bayonet is made of hardened steel. exhibition will now be performed by Seaman Crew David Kirsch of Company 110 from New Orleans, Louisiana.
Ladies and gentlemen, featured soloist David Kirsch from Company 110 from New Orleans, Louisiana. Our drum major for today is Simon Coot Derek Griffin of Company 111 from Shreveport, Louisiana. flag team will now join the German Bugle Corps in a patriotic salute to the United States of America.
Ladies and gentlemen, Recruit Training Command Special Drill Units. During the recruit's stay at Recruit Training Command, he is taught the fundamentals of basic military drill. Upon arriving at the front of the field, the recruits must align their company formation. This is accomplished by the playing of three heavy drum beats from the Drum and Bugle Corps. Each drum beat signals a specific movement which will align the sections and ranks of each company. This is followed by the adjutant's call. The adjutant's call is a short musical piece which signals each recruit company petty officer to account for the men in his company.
Today's review consists of four graduating companies with a total representation of 251 recruits. The division commander is Seaman Coop Marcus Flakes of Company 109 from Houston, Texas. The division adjutant is Seaman Coop Jeremy Cooperwood of Company 109 from Kansas City, Kansas. The division bugler is Seaman Coop Harry Wilson of Company 109 from Martinez, California. All right. Best. Ladies and gentlemen, Rear Admiral Lloyd Allen Jr., United States Navy. Commander, Carrier Group 4. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, recruits of Division 8. Before I start with my remarks, I'd like to recognize a very, very special guest today. He's a dis very, very distinguished naval officer, a combat hero World War II, both in the Atlantic and the Pacific, and he commanded the entire Pacific fleet in the late 1960s and during the very, very demanding time of the Vietnam War. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Admiral U.S. Grant Sharp, United States Navy, retired. Admiral Sharp. Admiral Mrs. Sharp, Captain Kolarov, Captain Hayes, Chief Emerson, Captain Headley, Captain and Mrs. Danaher and family, Mr. and Ms. Brummett, moms, dads, families, friends, and most importantly, Division 8 recruits. It's great to be back in San Diego to see many squadron mates, and shipmates, and friends. But most of all, it's a pleasure and an honor to be the reviewing officer for this magnificent and memorable ceremony. To the recruits that are graduating, this is a special day for you, one that you will remember for the rest of your life. You are about to graduate from boot camp and earn the right to be called Sailor United States Navy. My heartiest congratulations to you, and I wish you the very best as you enter the fleet and serve our great Navy in the challenging 1990s and into the 21st century. To the parents, to the families and friends, my heartiest congratulations to you as well. I know you share in the pride and honor of this graduation, and I thank you for your support, love, and sacrifice. And I'd like to take just a moment to ask the moms and dads to please stand and be recognized for giving us your magnificent sons. Please stand. Thank you. To Division 8, your graduation and entering the fleet is a special challenge, a special honor, and a special opportunity. Our world is changing. As you graduate today, we are in the midst of perhaps the most challenging, demanding, and dynamic period in our Navy's 217-year history. In the past four years, we have experienced what I call the quiet revolution. The Berlin Wall came down, Germany was reunited, the Warsaw Pact went away, the Soviet Union ceased to exist, the strategic nuclear threat is greatly diminished, the Cold War is over. But it's important to remember what made these changes possible. Our unwavering commitment to maintaining strong naval forces, defending our vital interests, preserving the basic values of freedom, liberty, and human dignity, and providing world leadership for struggling democracies made the difference. And oh, by the way, while we continue to provide leadership, stability, and support during this quiet revolution, we also won a hot <coughs> war. We deployed more than 500,000 men and women to Southwest Asia and transported an infrastructure equivalent to the city of Dallas, Texas, to defeat Saddam Hussein.
The world has changed, but the need for forward deployed naval forces has not. Today, even as we downsize, about 40% of our ships are at sea. More than 100 ships are forward deployed, more than 100. Another 100 ships are at sea conducting training and preparation for forward deployment. We will continue to maintain ships forward deployed because the world is still a dangerous and uncertain place. Recruits, you will be part of that fleet and will continue to pr protect our vital interests. The USS Theodore Roosevelt Battle Group has been on station in the Adriatic enforcing Operation Deny Flight in Yugoslavia and is now in the Red Sea. The USS Wasp Amphibious Assault Group is off the coast of Somalia ensuring stability and providing a rapid response contingency force. Destroyer Squadron 24 is on station in the Red Sea doing maritime interdiction in support of the United Nations embargo. The USS Abraham Lincoln Battle Group is en route to the Persian Gulf to relieve the recently departed Nimitz Battle Group. And you witnessed last weekend the Navy's cruise missile capability to send an appropriate response again to Saddam Hussein. We also have ships and aircraft operating in the Caribbean and Eastern Pacific conducting counter-drug operations. So Division 8, as you graduate today, you will join the fleet and become, become part of vital ongoing operations. Now I'm going to give you a challenge to set the course for your first tour in the Navy. There's six parts to this challenge. And I'm going to ask the moms and dads and families to take note so they can help you remember during your first tour. Here's my six-part challenge. First, that you become a petty officer. Each and every one of you graduating today should become a petty officer during your first tour. And the way you do that is to work hard every day, do your duty at work, and study hard for the exams. The second part of my challenge is that you all will advance your education in some way. I normally say at least complete a, your high school education or equivalency, but I note with special pride that almost all of you already have your high school education or equivalent, and several of you have college credits. In any case, you should strive for additional education. Third, that you earn a good conduct medal. And how do you do that? You earn that good conduct medal by doing your duty every day and staying out of trouble for four years. Fourth, that at the completion of your enlistment, you're eligible for an honorable discharge and eligible to re-enlist. Now, not all of you will choose to re-enlist, but many of you will. But I want all of you to have earned an honorable discharge and to be eligible to re-enlist so that when that time comes, the choice is yours. There's nothing sadder to me than to have a sailor who wants to re-enlist, but they haven't qualified for an honorable discharge, and they're unable to do so. Number five, that you will save some money and have some savings by the time you finish that first enlistment. And this is real easy in the Navy because we have what's called an allotment system, and you can take out an allotment for savings bonds or to go to a savings account or to do both and the Navy does that for you. Sixth, and most importantly, that you live the Navy's core values of courage, honor, and commitment. If you don't remember anything else that I say today, please remember these core values of courage, honor, and commitment, which are based on the oath that all of you took when you enlisted. And let re me remind you of that oath. Quote, I do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me, according to regulations and the Uniform Code of Military Justice, so help me God. The core values of courage, honor, and commitment are based on phrases from that oath and guide us personally and professionally. 
courage, honor, commitment. There are three naval officers here today that I'm going to recognize, and each one personifies one of these values. And by hearing about these naval officers, it will help you to remember that we're not talking about abstract words, but real values that are personified. Two of these officers started out as seamen recruits in boot camp, just like you are today. First is courage. Courage is based on the phrase, I will support and defend. Courage is to meet the demands of our profession and the mission when it is hazardous, demanding, or otherwise difficult. Courage is the value that gives us the moral and mental strength to do what's right, even in the face of personal or professional adversity. And there is no finer example of courage than Lieutenant Mark Allen. No relation. Please stand, Mark. Lieutenant Allen is assigned to my staff as flag lieutenant. He's a naval aviator, has accumulated over 1,600 flight hours and 270 arrested landings in eight different types of aircraft. He has 10 years of enlisted service and was Sailor of the Year at two different commands. Please remain standing, and I'll, after I introduce the other two, I'll ask you to join me in recognizing them. Second is honor. Honor is from the phrase, I will bear true faith and allegiance. And honor is to conduct ourselves in the highest ethical manner in all relationships with seniors, peers, and subordinates. To be honest and truthful in our dealings with each other and those outside the Navy, and be willing to make honest recommendations and to accept those recommendations from junior personnel. A fine example of the honor value is Lieutenant Valerie Byrd. Lieutenant Byrd is assigned here at RTC San Diego as a director of administration. She received her commission from Penn State, and during her nine years of service, she's been assigned to the Communications Security Material System in Washington, the Naval Space Surveillance Center, where she worked for me at the Naval Space Command, and the Tactical Training Group in Pacific and San Diego. Lieutenant Byrd and her husband, Julius, plan to attend the Naval Postgraduate School to study space systems. Third is commitment. Commitment is based on the statement, I will obey the orders. Commitment is to care for the safety, professional, personal, and spiritual well-being of our people, to treat each individual with human dignity, be committed to positive change and constant improvement. That's Captain Tom Danaher. Captain Danaher is the respective commanding officer of the USS Rainier, AOE-7. He has enlisted service and some of his tours include navigator of the USS Benjamin Stoddard, weapons officer of the USS Badger, chief engineer of the USS Ponchatoula, executive and commanding officer of the USS Fairfax County, and commanding officer of the USS Merrimack. He started out exactly where you are today. Courage, honor, and commitment. Please join me in recognizing these officers and the core values that they exemplify. So that's my challenge to you, and I'm going to quickly repeat those six parts because I want you to remember them. And moms and dads and families, please help them. Number one, to become a petty officer. Number two, to advance your education. Number three, to earn a good conduct medal. Number four, earn an honorable discharge and be eligible to re-enlist. Number five, to save some money. And number six, and most importantly, to live the Navy core values of courage, honor, and commitment. To the families and friends, my thanks and congratulations. To the sailors of Division 8, the future is yours, the Navy is yours, you are the United States Navy, and that I know that you will serve us with courage, honor, and commitment in the 1990s and into the 21st century. Thank you and God bless you all.
From each graduating company, a recruit is selected by his shipmates to be honored as their company's outstanding recruit. The recruits themselves select the individual in their company who best demonstrated personal initiative and devotion to duty. Captain Hayes will now present the awards to the outstanding recruits of Division 8. The Outstanding Recruit Award winner for Company 112 is Seaman Recruit Vincent Vasoyevich from Warren, Michigan. For Company 111, Seaman Recruit Andrew Talone from Shelton, Connecticut. For Company 110, Simon Recruit James Lawson from Brookfield, Connecticut. A Citizenship Award, sponsored by the Lions Club of San Diego, is presented to the outstanding recruit in each graduating division who best demonstrated the highest qualities of citizenship and a sincere concern for the morale and welfare of his fellow shipmates. The division officer is selected as the recipient of the Lions Club Citizenship Award from Company 109, Seaman Recruit Scott Chile from Phoenix, Arizona. From each graduating company, a recruit is selected by their company commanders to be the company honorman. He is selected by virtue of his demonstrated attention to duty, military conduct, loyalty, and comradeship. Mr. Richard Emerson will present the certificates to this week's honorman from Division 8. The honorman for Company 112 is Simon Recruit Oscar Canoe from Brownsville, Texas. For Company 110, Simon Recruit Albert King from Westland, Michigan. For Company 109, Simon Recruit John Oliver Infante from San Diego, California. The Navy League Outstanding Recruit Award is sponsored by the Navy League of the United States. It is presented each week to the company honorman who best demonstrated his support of Navy ideals and traditions. These include patriotism, individual dignity, personal responsibility, pride in unit, and physical fitness. The winner of the Navy League Outstanding Recruit Award is Seaman Recruit Arthur Lopez of Company 111 from Austin, Texas.
At the command officer's center, all recruit commanders and guide-on bearers march to the front and center of the formation. Historically, it was at this point that commanding officers would issue orders and instructions to the unit commanders. Following this, the unit commanders would face about and return to the units to pass along the information to the troops. It is used at this time to give a visual demonstration of the chain of command concept. Staff, commanded by Seaman Recruit Marcus Flakes of Company 109 from Houston, Texas. Recruit 
training commands, crack rifle drill team, led by Simon recruit Brian Seely of Company 110 from New Orleans, Louisiana. Company 109, sponsored by Surface Warfare Officer School, San Diego, led by Seaman Recruit Michael Farley from Shreveport, Louisiana. Award winner, Company 110, sponsored by Carrier, Airborne Early Warning Squadron 110, San Diego, led by Senior Coop Michael Cook from Hearst, Texas. Company, Company 111, sponsored by Naval Air Station Miramar AIMD, San Diego, led by Seaman Recruit Charles Brown from Seal, Alabama. Company 112, sponsored by USO Airport Center, San Diego, led by Simon Recruit Sean Lane from Woodstock, Georgia. Flag team, led by Seaman Recruit Vincent Vasoyevich from Company 112 from Warren, Michigan. Commands Drum and Bugle Corps, conducted by musician first class Michael Grant. Ah, 
Attention. Go down. Forward. March.
We're not the Air Force. We're not the Air Force. The low flying Air Force. The low flying Air Force. We are the Navy. We are the Navy. The mighty, mighty Navy. The mighty, mighty Navy. Are we weak or are we strong? We are strong. Sound off. One, two. Sound off. Three, four. Break it all down. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Mom and Dad, can't you see? Mom and Dad, can't you see? What are TC done for me? What are TC done for me? For me, it's first the booger belt. For me, it's first the booger belt. Now it's more than sugar belts. Now it's more than sugar belts. Whoa, 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 We are the best. We are the best. From the east and to the west. From the east and to the west. Now about the company. Now about the company. And the powerful CCs. And the powerful CCs. Stepping good and feeling great. Stepping good and feeling great. Cause we're from Division 8. Cause we're from Division 8. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. One, one, two, we are the best. One, one, two, we are the best. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. From the east and to the west. From the east and to the west. One zero nine, you were so cool. One zero nine, you were so cool. Even though you act a fool. Even though you act a fool. One one zero was a sight to see. One one zero was a sight to see. Even though you felt PT. Even though you felt PT. One one one, you were so great. One one one, you were so great. But you didn't cut parade. But you didn't cut parade. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Company 112 is number one.